So we begin by bluntly saying that counseling theories, methodologies, and techniques are not science. They are not science. Now, you will be accused of being anti-science because you don't support the, uh, the methamphetamines that they feed our school kids, all right, under the name of science. Um, you'll be accused of being anti-science if you just simply start asking questions. And well, man, who are you? You know, what are your credentials? How dare you? Okay. I don't claim to have any credentials. I'm just asking questions. And, and if you would, please answer my question as simple as you can so a dummy like me can understand it. But don't just uh, call me names or say I'm anti-science. Please answer my question. I want to know. No, it is definitely pseudoscience. And uh, I enjoyed the quotes in this chapter. Um, Sir Karl Popper, did you look him up? He, uh, another one of those uh, Austrian uh, Jewish background types, uh, although uh, his grandparents were all Jewish, but by his parents' generation, they had converted to Lutheranism. Uh, and so he was actually raised as a Lutheran. I uh, could not glean anything related to his uh, personal conversion or to uh, the strength of his Christian walk. It seemed to me that it was, it seemed to be fairly liberal uh, Lutheran cultural Christianity as far as I could tell. Um, but he uh, is considered one of the greatest philosophers of science and uh, worthwhile reading if philosophy of science is one of your interests. And um, he just flat out said, this is, this is not science. And uh, I enjoyed the, uh, the quotations there. Popper declares that psychological theories formulated by Freud, Adler, and others Though posing as science, sciences, had in fact more in common with primitive myths than with science, that they resembled astrology rather than astronomy. Isn't that something? He also said these theories described, and, and this, so this is not a Christian trying to debunk a psycho heresy in the, in, from the standpoint of trying to defend biblical inerrancy. This is simply a scientist saying, wait a minute, okay, right? What was that line? Back off, man, I'm a scientist. Um, but, and, and I wish there would be more doing this today. I would love to see some real physicists and chemists and, and, and some brilliant uh, you know, mathematicians and so forth uh, just stand up and tell these Al Gore types, either do real science or shut up, Okay. Because this global warming hysteria is, is, is just simply anti-capitalism, uh, you know, UN money grab when it comes right down to it. All right, I'm off my soapbox now. Let's return back to chapter six. But it is neat that, uh, uh, that the Bob Gans received these, uh, documented these quotes from such sources as Popper. These theories describe some facts, but in the manner of myths. They contain uh, most interesting psychological suggestions, but not in a testable form. You, you can't experiment, you can't test it, you can't demonstrate it. And peers can't come along also and test it and demonstrate it. See. Other, uh, this is a book I might pick up at some point, The Mind Game by E. Fuller Torrey. Only for the sake of having this quote. Uh, the techniques used by Western psychiatrists are, with few exceptions, on exactly the same scientific plane as the techniques used by witch doctors. <laughs> All right. Which uh, I thought was uh, accurate and uh, humorous at the same time. Other quotes, uh, different authors, different texts, did not jump out at me the way those did, so I uh, didn't highlight them. Um, Yeah. Any questions so far on what we've uh, addressed? All right. Hmm. The behavior therapist. And some of the quotes, and he even apologizes that some of the quotes are hard to follow, but... Um, the road from observation to conclusion is saturated with social influences on the scientist. And this is what happens. You have this human dynamic. 
uh, that all of their quote unquote research, their studies, their experimentation, which isn't really, but when they do their clinical studies, and there has been, I think I mentioned this in previous weeks, there has been for decades a tension between the, uh, uh, the, the practice of psychotherapy, actual clinics and practices and, and those that are doing this, versus uh, researchers that actually in universities are uh, more on the research side of things. They're more on the um, oh, theory rather than practice. And there's always been a tension with relationship to that. And what really caused it to explode into pop culture is when they caused it to explode on the uh, practice side of things, not on the research side of things, or not on anything that could even remotely be called science. But even the studies that they try to call science are themselves full of subjective considerations. All of their diagnoses, if you ever read the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, you ever read those? And they document sickness. Your, your kid's going to be diagnosed uh, uh, ADD, uh, simply based on uh, personality observations. And they're so vague and they're so uh, loosey-goosey that uh, probably, you know, any kid with a, a hyperactive uh, imagination or a lot of energy and so forth could very quickly be diagnosed like that, say. And um, it's all subjective. I said subjective. How do you feel? and How does it appear to you? What does it seem like? And uh, on the part of the people they're surveying, and then on the part of the people doing the surveys who say, well, they answered this, but I kind of suspect they really should have answered that. How's that for science? You know? And uh, then when we get later on, we start talking about these recovered memories and these, well, they said this, but that's only the self that is hiding this. Uh, the re they've created another alter, another uh, alter ego, another... Uh, person, that's the one that has memory of this. And it's just, it's, it's a pure fabrication, okay? We'll talk about that, because that, to me, was one of the more interesting portions of this, uh, this chapter. I'm too young to remember some of the case studies they mentioned, so I had to go look it up. Um, only mild to moderate relief, okay? You would think that an industry that makes millions um, if you include the pharmaceutical industry, a industry that makes billions, uh, you would think that any endeavor that consumes so much of our economy uh, would have more results than this. But in their own research, by their own studies, in their own admission, it really doesn't do very much. Um, only mild to moderate relief. Whether the magnitude of the psychotherapy effect is medium or small remains a moot point. And the debate really is, is it a medium benefit or a small benefit? Because no one has claimed that it is large. That's their own admission in their own journal, concluding their own studies. While no researchers would claim that psychotherapy's level of relief is large, many practitioners and popularizers do. And that's the difference. Who is it that's promoting this? And what are the benefits they're promising? And why are the benefits, you know, a mile high and exaggerated like you won't believe, but the actual documented research doesn't bear that out, okay? The surveys they take, the exit surveys they take, the exit polling they take, the aftercare studies they do, uh, the surveys they conduct with people post-counseling, um, and, uh, and how many are back in counseling uh, on a recidivism basis? Uh, how many just walked away giving up, saying it's worthless, it hadn't done, do anything? Uh, things of that nature. And in their own studies, by their own admission, no one has claimed that the, uh, the uh, effect has been large. Only mild to moderate relief. Which begs the question, why? <laughs> why? Pay all this money? Why bury your soul? Why put yourself through? Why damage your soul, in fact, by engaging in uh, sinful communication, by defying the will of God, by partaking in car carnal activity, um, destroying your own soul by tearing down those that you're supposed to be building up? Hmm. Only mild to moderate relief. 
from psychotherapy. That's the conclusion over the past 25 years. Uh, psychotherapy is most helpful to those who need it least. <laughs> well, it's like saying the people who do best on diets are skinny people. Okay? Or the people who need to lose five pounds have an easier time than the people who need to lose 250 pounds. Okay? Wow, maybe this is science. All right, the science of the obvious. Um, again, it comes back to the people who really want to change. The people who identify their life is a wreck and they've got to quit doing what's making it a wreck and they've got to do something different. And they, they work hard and they decide they've got to change. The truth is, a significant number of those people would have been helped anyway even if they'd not gotten counseling. You know, they'd have just grown up or they'd have just gotten a friend or they'd have just gotten an older brother or they'd have gotten a dad or a parent or somebody would have kicked them upside the head and they'd have said, yeah, you're right, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a wreck. I'm going gotta, I gotta to change. Okay? And so there again, if, if, if that is the case, if somebody can do that just on their own, then what are we really talking about? We're just talking about um, earthly circumstances. Okay? At the end of the day, we're not talking about a redeemed life. We're not talking about a transformed mind through the Word of God. We're not talking about a believer growing to the glory of Jesus Christ. We're just talking about a human being that uh, went through a course on self-improvement. And he's still going to die and go to hell. Alright? He is self-improved. Whatever. Okay? He needs Christ. So psychotherapy is most helpful to those who need it least. Yeah. The equal outcomes phenomenon, this is what I mentioned earlier. I do it to a bird from Alice in Wonderland in that wonderful illustration. Not all of the approximately 500 approaches to therapy have been tested, but for the many that have been tested, the overwhelming conclusion is that everybody has won and all must have prizes. Okay? Uh, in other words, all psychotherapies appear to work even though many contradict each other. And I've encountered this. I shared this with you in our introductory class. I have had believers come up and tell me. They say, Pastor, I know you, you disapprove of counseling, but I went through counseling, and boy, it, it did me a world of good. I'm glad I went through it. It helped. Okay? Well, you believe it helped. And based upon what you thought you needed, and based upon what you thought you received, uh, you received what you thought was helpful. All right? And I'm sure in those terms, it was. But let's go back to what the scripture says and let's evaluate what has God provided. And had you used God's method, what could you have pursued as opposed to what the world offers? And when they say, and when they say it helps, what do we mean by that? <laughs> they don't have any problems anymore? What do we mean by that? That, well, I've, I've worked through my issues now. What does that mean? Well, I understand them better now. What does that mean? What do you understand? Oh, well, see, it's not really my fault. I had this imbalance. So I'm so glad I went to and got this explanation and got these pills. And Okay. Now we have set the conversation related to what they define. It did them a lot of good. It did them a lot of good. All right. 